What's crackin', Gorilla Gang? This is Internet Personality Vangelis. Rise of the Beasts is a freshly licensable aspect of the Transformers intellectual property, and the folks over at YOLO Park have provided me with review copies of their trio of opening relevant figure kits. Starting things off will be Optimus Primal, the boss monkey who has come in both the future and the past. Also, on the topic of these being figure kits, I say that because Plamo they ain't. I would compare these more closely with that run of Kotobukiya Star Wars quote-unquote model kits that were basically scale statues packaged in a manageable number of easily assembled components. Yolo Park's Rise of the Beast kits are basically shared scale action figures packaged in a manageable number of easily assembled components. Like, putting one of these together will take no longer than 5 to 10 minutes depending on how much trouble you have getting the head onto the ball socket or some of the tighter pegs into their requisite holes. You don't have to assemble a single complex interlink or even hinge joint, just pegs and balls. All the screws and pins are done for you ahead of time. Obviously, this does call to question whether these are sold as kits for the same reason as Koto's Star Wars statues, that being the goofy granular minutiae of incredibly specific licensing terms. But on the bright side, this does leave them very open to customization, upgrading, and painting. Like I said, figure kits. Jumping right off the screen, this non-transforming Optimus Primal robot mode looks pretty accurate to my eyes. Bear in mind, my eyes are operating off of one theater viewing and a few check-ins with fuzzy crowd cam footage on YouTube, maybe a cursory Google image search. Anyway, he's got a ton of sculpted undergreeble beneath his outer plates of bot bulk and gorilla padding. It would be, as the kids say, sicko mode to see all of that blasted with some gunmetal paintwork. That said, there is a fair amount of silver paint on Primal's body. Also, screws, even a few pins. Kinda hammers home the notion that this is a figure kit rather than a model kit. And the hand feel similarly lies in a bit of a no man's land, certainly more solid than an articulated plamo or, you know, Gundam plaw, yet slightly lighter to the touch than a packaged action figure. Optimus Primal's green-eyed, face-plated visage actually comes with a very mainframe alternate sculpt that you can swap in. Uh, be careful, the green eye piece on the face-plated face sculpt sometimes falls out on my copy. I don't mind this kiss-ready alternate face option, but I also don't recall ever seeing it during the film, which tends to make me happy to just leave the fully plated face installed in its place. Primal's symmetrical pair of fists have a gap in them to accept his twin swords, which are big banana slicers that each get a nice splash of silver paint on their blades. The slightly grippy material of the fists helps keep them in place, and you can even tab them together to double-edge the action in a single fist. Untabbing them back apart does feel kind of scary, so take care with your application of pressures. Oh, those fists can also pop off their wrist balls for some hand swapping, too. You get a pair of slightly awkwardly open hands, which don't really feel committed to being calm or displayed. You also get two extra singleton right hands as well. One pointing with conviction and heroism, wanting to lay down the law that the trans warp key must be acquired, it's just over there! And then you get one fully closed fist, just, just one. It looks good, but I really wish that it was part of a pair, because it also looks way better than the weapon holding hands when they aren't, you know, holding a weapon. Maybe in that upcoming accessory pack YOLO Park have talked about. I know it's mostly for Prime and Bumblebee, but like, hey, how about, how about a, a left fist for Primal as well? YOLO Park Primal has a dedicated hinge right under his head just for looking up at the stars. Right below that is a big ball socket joint, and at the bottom of this neck right here is another big ball socket joint so that you can pump his head back and forth, look left and right. You can even kind of pump to an angle, tilt, adjust, look up a bit so he's got a real menacing kind of hench, I'ma kill you. Uh, sort of forward glare going on. The collar piece here also is on a ball socket joint and it only has a tiny bit of wiggle, and I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm sure it'll come into practice over time. The shoulders use a ball socket connection for their forward, backwards, and sort of ovular motion. You can even pop it out to take a look at it. It's the one joint I'm a little worried about in longevity-wise, but also it's a big, thick ball socket, so I could just, you know, give it a, give it a thickening treatment if I have to. The shoulder pad here uh, can flip up. Uh, to make way for this humongous outward hinge. So he, he can go well beyond T-Pose. He can go to here, you can go all the way up to here, you can get the ball socket involved to go even higher or a little bit lower. Shoulder joints are real pleasant. 
So is the bicep swivel, because it works. This forearm joint, there is a little hinge topped with a ball socket joint for this forearm plate, entirely so it can just get out of the way of whatever on earth you're doing. This is a bit of a flimsy feeling joint. Again, it's just a C-clip and a ball socket. It's all thickenable, but uh, bear in mind, it's kind of wiggly out of the box, at least on mine. And then we got in here some hydraulic detailing that moves around with the double hinged elbow motion. And what's kind of clever here, because you can see like this, this bit here is pumping, uh, there is no linkage articulation going on here, it just looks like there is. It's like phantom linkage articulation. And I kind of dig that as far as, you know, giving the serotonin feel of linkage articulation on something that's like 30 US dollars, uh, MSRP. The wrist ball joints, also due to the grippy material of all the different hand options, it's a big ball joint with a lot of clearance so you can actually get a fair number of angles out of this. If I jam a sword in there, he is able to take a sword and like, you know, hoist it over his shoulder or point it at a fool. In the mid torso, it's not a ball socket joint. It just kind of works like one. Uh, it's just a, a multi-hinged peg, which is kind of cool. There's a little hingedy flap back here too. Uh, don't put that inside here. I've tried that. It means you just can't get the peg in all the way in the mid torso. This is supposed to rest outside here and just allow for a little bit of covering the gap. But down here on the waist, simple swivel, you might notice there's a little bit of a, a bit of a leaning tower, a Pisa thing going on. On my copy, this peg is slightly offset to screen left. I don't know if it's malformed or just misassembled. I haven't popped all the screws open to take a look. I'm curious if this is only on my copy or if this is something that other people might have reported, but bear that in mind just in case uh, you have a symmetry brain and you're going crazy as I was for about five minutes <laughs> after assembling the dude. The hip joints are a simple uh, forward, backward swivel, but the thing that they're mounted on does the sort of three zero thing. Uh, as I've seen it most most often on the DLXs with this forward axis swingity hinge so you can get deeper, higher kicks, you can get a little bit more uh, pelvic freedom, uh, you can use that to just, you know, fig arts the hip down, so you can also do full-on unimpeded uh, teabagging, which is quite pleasant. There is a working thigh swivel in here. This is where some bits might collide here and there, especially on the buttock, but uh, other than, you know, needing to be aware of the various furry buttock platings, uh, I do enjoy how this helps sell the effect of all the undergreeble beneath, or visible beneath all the plating. And in here on the knee, we actually do get a real piece of linkage doubled hinged articulation. The kneecap can also flip up. It really doesn't need to, but it can. Uh, but you can see this piston down here is actually working. It only has that much range, and it's a pinned joint too, not a screwed joint or a friction joint, but that's kind of cool to see, and it's all pre-assembled too, so you don't have to futz with it uh, yourself. And then finally, here in the ankles, these things peg in so they can swivel left and right, you can even, you know, peg them off if you wanted to. Dedicated sideways hinge, dedicated different forward-backward hinge, dedicated very minor toe flex, and then I guess because it's Optimus Primal, he has two extra toe plates. Uh, one on either side, and they they just seem to be decorative like uh, like fictionally you could imagine This is how he would like grip onto you know a, He would toe grip a surface in robot mode, but yeah It's just a, two little moving parts on either side of either foot the articulation on Yolo Pargotimus Primal is in a word fairly joyful especially for the price point and what it is I've not gotten to spend much time with the opening trio of Yolo Park Rise of the Beast kits, but my initial impressions have left me happiest with Optimus Primal here. He just seems to hit all the key notes, a solid sculpt that uses its non-transforming nature to lean hard into its mechanical undergreeble, a full suite of accessories outside of hand swaps, and some slightly illusory implications of linkage articulation in the knees and elbows. Optimus Prime and Bumblebee are their own stories to be told but the simplest comparison point for me to draw is the fact that they only come with hand swaps as their stock loadouts. 
Obviously, there are two big caveats you have to click with on this guy, though. One, you have to be down with Optimus Primal's highly non-vehicular and somewhat monotone robot mode. And two, you've got to be into the figure kit concept. Prime and Bumblebee stealth their way through that second part slightly, thanks to all their colorful car truck accoutrements. Primal does look good, but as with many of his collector-grade pieces, despite strong applications of silver paint and a pair of green eyes, he is very flat. I am excited, though, to lay in some dry brushing on the gorilla pads and some gun meddling on his undergreeble, so bear all that in mind if you're also a hobby type like me. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I'd like to extend a hearty, banana-filled YOLO to all my supporters on Patreon, YouTube membership, and other support platforms. It's with your kindness that I can truly peel the flesh from any chewable potassium pillar that may stand in my way.